Welcome to the Digging Deeper Podcast, brought to you by New Hope Church. My name is Matt, and I'm so excited to dive into today's topic. But before we get there, let's go around the room and see how everybody's doing. Jay, how you doing today, man? Doing great, man. Doing really good. Uh, super happy that the province is opening, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we no longer have to be prisoners in our own homes. <laughs> Uh, and really, even more excited than that is to be able to do church inside again and have a yeah. huge outdoor service that we're really looking forward to yeah. and planning for. So mm-hmm. all that stuff's very exciting to me. And, and I'm going on holidays next That's week. Right. So it's That's just exciting. all good. It's all yeah, good man. over here. Beauty. Where are you going? Julie Horrocks' cottage. Oh, yeah. Nice. Where is nice. that exactly? <laughs> That's awesome. Good, good, good. That's right. That's right. Yeah, That's awesome, man. Glad to hear it. That's exciting. Lindy, how are you doing? I'm great. Um... Sunday, I was sweating a lot. Yes, so. I can understand. <laughs> but it was great. It was fun. <laughs> but I was like, ooh, summer is here. And then this happened. And I just heard Ross's voice again. Pivot. <laughs> and now we are ready to pivot and have yep. church indoors again, which is really exciting for me. I think it's great. And yeah, just excited about planning and putting everything together. Mm-hmm. Telling the band that the whole band can be there on Sunday because normally yeah. we have to divide them up. Yeah. So it's, it's all good. Sweet. Toby, how you doing, man? Yeah, I share with the excitement of these two. You know, it's awesome to go, yippee! Yeah, yeah. Wish we had a bit more warning, but you know, what <laughs> yeah, are you yeah, going to yeah. do? Oh, <laughs> tomorrow? Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, cool. we can do it tomorrow. We got this. <laughs> so, uh, that's awesome. And furthermore, I'm feeling very humid. Yes. <laughs> but yes, your hair. <laughs> yes. Your hair it's affecting your hair. <laughs> <laughs> this weather is great. Mm. That's it. Awesome. Thank you. That bye bye. Good, <laughs> Sarah, how are you doing? Great. I just finished my last math class approximately three minutes ago. Oh, beauty. So that is officially my last math class of the year. So that is exciting. Um, And just wrapping up this week with PD and report cards and stuff. So Mm -hmm. I am really excited to be in summer mode and get to do day camp and uh, outdoor services and lots of fun stuff. That's awesome. Very cool. Nate, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, great. Um, I like even as we sit here doing this podcast i like seeing the fact that there's five kids running around on the park yes. 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 outside yes. um it warms my heart yes. a lot and uh yeah i just want to say on on the podcast way to go matt you, <laughs> yeah. 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 you've yeah. done an amazing job coordinating oh, so many of the build things and all the projects we've done and yeah. it is um i'm excited to welcome the family home. Oh, totally. and so i'm ready yeah man yeah. absolutely yeah, that playground build. Um, I mean, I'm super excited this time, but I actually, I think I was more excited to see, you know, the same guys consistently come back time and time and time again. And I mean time and time mm-hmm. and time again yeah. to build this thing <laughs> with the same passion and excitement of, of what it meant mm-hmm. to be able to invite kids out. Yeah. Uh, and, the, you know, and the kids want to invite their faith fives. And these guys mm-hmm. just got so excited about that. Mm-hmm. Like, man, we're doing something that has internal impact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. You don't necessarily feel that way when you're hanging upside down, tapping a rivet into a <laughs> metal post. But when you can sit back at the end of the night, and even last night we were debriefing, the guys were just so excited that, wow, we did this thing. Yeah. And now, yeah. now we get to see what God's going to do with yeah. it. I Literally, up- first thing this morning, as I were driving in, Will is like losing it. He's so excited. And then he had to show his whole class on Zoom the finished playground <laughs> and had to ask um, Nathan over Zoom because Porter's in his class for permission to go on it. So it's so exciting. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so that's good. Well, Nate, man, I absolutely loved your sermon on Sunday. Uh, Thanks, I think one of my one of my favorite. I, I love when you pull analogies or examples because mm-hmm. they're so so yes. real. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorites from this this Sunday was the idea of treating our faith. You said we treat our faith like a Costco taste test. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the Fresno lens. Oh, that one's okay, cool I too. Like Nobody that. wants that to talk really about lighthouses. <laughs> like, like to that's talk it. About and the physics of light. I like the rainbow one. Yeah, right? yeah, right. No, wait, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but no man it was so good and maybe just a real quick recap kind of what you were getting at and then i have a few questions to kind of follow that up yeah i i mean the uh, it was it's all stemming from erica's testimony because she's mm-hmm. the one who said that i i was like enough with this nonsense and yeah. wanted to get pushed forward in her faith yeah. and i just loved the heart cry behind that mm-hmm. and you have to kind of dissect what what does that mean you know like where was that coming from when someone says like i've had enough of this yeah. Living, living this kind of mediocre, wishy-washy faith, and mm-hmm. I'm in. Yeah. You know, and you go like, well, yeah, what? Where does? Where am I living that in my life, in my faith? And I mean, that's kind of the call on all of us is to always reflect on where we're at. And and then it led me to go, oh yeah, that's the. Here's some easy areas where I think we 
um, you know, I think there's lots more that we'll chat about now yeah. that we kind of live this sort of uh, toe in the water faith mm. instead yeah. of like, you know, like Erica said, jumping in to the tank and getting baptized. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this idea we like to taste things, but we never want to invest in it. We never want to actually spend the money on it or, or because pay the, the cost, cost of giving up control, right? Like yeah. the cost, yeah. you know, not the you know fifteen dollar ham at Costco. <laughs> like yeah. the cost of giving up control. Yeah, that's the cost that we're weighing in mm-hmm. in our head in our heart mm-hmm. when we go like, oh man, if I go all in, like I'm not in control. Wh- yeah. Well, what happened? You know, like yeah. the, we 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 weigh this cost seemingly in our head and. um Somehow we still think it's best for us to <laughs> manage it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that and that brings me to kind of the first question I wanted to get into this morning was, you know, what are some of those dangers of of being a fan of Jesus but never following him, of of liking God but not actually loving God and pursuing mm-hmm. a relationship with him? Um, what would you guys say are some of the big dangers in that? Because, you know, like you said on Sunday, a lot of people ride that line or try to ride that line. I don't know that mm-hmm. you actually can, but people try mm-hmm. to ride that line for a really long time. What are your thoughts? Lindy, stares out. I think, well, one of the dangers is just plain and simply that God does really, he does really does not like that. <laughs> because he says in his word, if you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out of his mouth. And I think that's yeah. a very detailed uh, description. And he makes it kind of clear that he's he's not a fan of that. You being a fan of him, he's not a fan of that. And to me, I, I, I dove into that a little bit. And I was like, this is kind of... It feels almost harsh that he's going, I'd rather you be cold. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I'd rather you be cold than lukewarm for my kingdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And mm-hmm. so just, yeah, just a quick point to that. I just no, think yeah, that absolutely. that is, that that's, that's, God is not a fan of that. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not yeah. going to make him happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a big reason why he would rather you be cold than lukewarm yeah. because when you're lukewarm, you can misrepresent him. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Where, yeah. you know, the Bible calls us Christians, little Christs and, and if we're living that in between life, it's it's very hypocritical. And when people see that, I mean, you hear it all the time today. Like, why people love Jesus and they hate the church? Mm. Why? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's this lukewarm kind of thing. Is is we we don't look good when we when we're lukewarm and we misrepresent God Himself. Mm-hmm. I think the other thing I'll say is. I mean, if you think about it, it's just a painful existence mm-hmm. yeah. when you're you're mixing like truth and and the flourishing life that the spirit gives you with like toxic waste all the time, mm-hmm. and it's just back and forth, back and forth existence, and it's just painful. Mm-hmm. It's like being in and out of addiction. Mm-hmm. It's just not fun, and it's yeah. and it and it looks ugly, it feels ugly, and it causes chaos around us. It's not just affecting me. It's not just affecting the person who's in the midst of it. It's fe- affecting everyone that's around them. So uh, I think that's another big reason why it's mm-hmm. it's not great. Mm-hmm. It also makes me think of you know after Jesus tells the parable of the talents, he says like whoever has more will be given to them, and whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him, and and. I just think, you know, when we go lukewarm, when we go a little bit in, it's the flow of gravity pushes us to nothingness as opposed to getting carried along to get all in. So I think, you know, it's so it's so I I just know I've seen so many people. I think so many people have experienced this in their own life when Jesus has been a part of their life. Soon he's no part of their life. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I think that's another real danger in making him only a part as soon he will be nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I agree with everything you guys are saying. I think it hurts our witness. Yeah, I think that's one of the big reasons James in, in the book of James yeah. gets fired up over the fact that like your deeds aren't lining up. And if there's no fruit, are you even a believer? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, like kind of. Yeah. Pushing us even to the extreme of going, your, your your witnesses hurt in the community as Christians when we're supposed ought to be set apart and ought to be a light, and you're not the light, which is what the sermon was about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other thing I, I find just practically, like you know, this is this is at work in our church family, um, mm-hmm. in the countless testimonies of long, long, long term Christians yeah. who've joined New Hope yeah. in the last year. And who have seen revival in their family? They're yeah. in a life group for the first time. Their kids got baptized. They, yeah. they they're experiencing the one one of the kids in our youth group goes like, "Mom, that was, on a Zoom call, I just felt the Holy Spirit, Mom, over mm-hmm. that prayer. Like we were praying, and I just feel I think is this the Holy Spirit, Mom? You know, like <laughs> yeah. people are seeing that, and I and I think that's like the 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 if we actually have to look at what the difference is about following or fan, I go, mm. it's not hard to see it. We felt yeah, those moments. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's not hard. Like you don't have to convince people, uh, Christians, Christians have known the moment when they were all in 
yeah. and what and what it looked like to go like each day, each moment. Yeah, I felt like yeah. I was journeying with Jesus versus no, no, no. Now I I see Jesus on Sundays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. absolutely. And you know, talking about this idea of of it being a poor witness, and and we we want to dip our toes, we don't want to pay the cost. You know, and you alluded to this already, Nate, but I want to spend some more time talking about it. You know, what is the actual cost, and why do we wrestle with that so much? Uh, the cost of actually following Jesus versus being a fan of Jesus. Like we've talked a lot about if you're a fan, <laughs> these are all the negative things <laughs> that are going to happen. Uh, but if you're a follower, like, hey, what is the cost? And then, you know, the struggle that comes out of that and just the awesomeness that also comes out of that too. Maybe dive into that a little bit. Nate, can you start us out on that, man? Yeah, I'll give one quick one. Sure. And, uh, not being selfish. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, that means like, oh, wait, my money goes to, mm-hmm. but my money's not my money. Mm-hmm. That, it's mm-hmm. the churches. And, and in my marriage, I can't be selfish. I have to lay my life down for my wife. Like, she always comes first. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. every the, the call, <laughs> the Christian call is uh, is a selfless, mm-hmm. you know, servant. I, I use the word on Sunday, you, yeah. you're a servant. And people, I'm sure people still go, ooh, mm-hmm. I don't like that word. <laughs> that doesn't sound very catchy in church to yeah. be called servants of, you know, Christ-like mm-hmm. servants. Mm-hmm. And I go, that is that is the call. You can't, yeah. you're not selfish. And I think that's when we weigh the cost. We go, oh, but we still want this and I still want to do it this way and I still want to cling to this and I still like that. And, and now I have to give all that up, you know, for mm-hmm. Christ. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. If I can take it back to your Costco analogy, you know, yes. like you, you taste something good, there you go. Man, I know, okay, let's buy it. It's expensive, but let's buy it. And then, Four months down the line, you still got because you buy this huge <laughs> bulk of honey, <laughs> so sorry, whatever you, yeah, you yeah. test it. <laughs> you, you don't buy one loaf of bread, you buy eight. You, go, you, yeah. can, you bought a whole lamb. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you go, man, that was worth it. Like, mm. you see the fruit. So, uh, you know, just to, to play the other side of it, you go, mm-hmm. you know what? Yeah, the cost at that point might seem really expensive or like you have to yeah. sacrifice a lot yeah. but down the line you're going to look back and you go man that was totally worth it i'm loving this honey <laughs> <laughs> the seven kilogram jar of honey <laughs> Cos- we're really pumping Costco. we are man <laughs> is- we're not sponsored this is not a sponsor not episode. Sponsored yeah. by Costco. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely jay go ahead man yeah i think i mean the, the answer i think to what is the actual cost of following is it's costs everything (laughs) it's it's you leave nothing behind and uh it means a loss of control Mm -hmm. and a loss of a sense of that youth that you know what's right all the time Mm -hmm. yeah and and that that that's a giving up that's a release of of something and sometimes it's a release of something that we think is ours and so it's 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 actually a little bit painful but I would argue the pain and the struggle and the difficulty of letting go of everything, of, of going all in, mm-hmm. that pain is way less than the pain that comes when you're lukewarm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the pain that comes when you're lukewarm is, 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 a, is a, like, it's, it's all around you. It's, mm-hmm. You're just causing chaos everywhere. And it's a constant state of, of back and forth, which is very uncomfortable. It's like, am I gonna jump? Am I not gonna jump? Am I gonna jump? I'm not gonna jump. And you're like, you ever seen <laughs> yeah. that kid who's like, you go, you go for the cliff jump or whatever, yeah, and the kid's right. up there. He's like, okay, okay guys, yeah. count, count me down, <laughs> count me down. He's on like, the end three. of the diving board with a huge lineup, yeah. and everyone's yeah. like, oh, oh, at jump the already. Lake. <laughs> and, at the lake. Yeah. Get in the water. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and it, it's not just painful for him up there. Mm. Back and forth, you're all, we're all like, just jump. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's a couple thoughts. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I just think that, uh, just again, going back to the lukewarm, um, I heard someone say this and I thought it was amazing. We, we f- feel like it sounds harsh when, when, they say, when he says, like, I'd rather you be cold. But I think he kind of knows that when you're completely cold, you're actually going to reach that point of, oh, my goodness, I need God. I need someone. You're going to mm-hmm. get to that breaking point sooner <laughs> than if you were lukewarm and you're just living and you're using God whenever you need him and you just continue. And you can go like this, on like this for a very, yeah. very long yeah. time. Yeah. Right? I think maybe you'll just reach that breaking point sooner if you've just been cold. But when you're mm. lukewarm, you can keep drifting and drifting and drifting. And I, that's a very bad place. Bad place. I, uh, I think we're all worried that, like you're saying, Lindy, that we're all worried that they might send us to South Africa. God, if we, <laughs> yeah. if we surrender <laughs> to God. <laughs> If we surrender right. to God, he's going to yeah. go like, I'm calling you to South Africa. We're like, no, no they, just, they just came from there. <laughs> you know? He took us out. You want to say that, you know? It doesn't make sense. No, but, but in, in all honesty, like Jay says it costs everything. It, it's, it, 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 
Scripture doesn't paint like an easy call. No. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we just need to be clear on that. Like, you know, surrendering is, yeah. this is the beauty of the upside down kingdom yeah, of, of Jesus. Right. In your surrender and possibly yeah. in your struggle, if you, lose your you life, you'll find, find mm-hmm. your yeah. life. Like, yeah. we take up our cross, we yeah. sell, go sell everything, he yeah. says. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the, the, the beautiful upside down kingdom of yeah. the, our worldly striving mm-hmm. is what is at stake. The world in our in our you know earthly bodies and our yeah. earthly possessions yeah. and our earthly comfort that's what's at stake yeah. when we surrender to Jesus. But it's okay we hold it open yeah. because we know who we're surrendering to. Right. But yeah, that is like I agree with Jay. It's, it's everything. Like every the time mm-hmm. Jesus always pushes the boundaries. Every time someone goes, I think I'm doing good. He goes, Yeah, here's the bar. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> that's and, right, so, that's right, and then right. you yeah. see Paul struggling and yet going like I'm mm. thanking God for this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. One of my favorite um, passages in Mere Christianity, which is a book by C.S. Lewis, he talks about this, and uh, I got to read a little bit of it. Give me all of you. I don't want, this is him speaking as Jesus. I don't want so much of your time or so much of your talents and money or so much of your work. I want you, all of you. I have not come to torment or frustrate the natural man or woman, but to kill it. No half measures will do. I don't want to only prune a branch here and a branch there. Rather, I want the whole tree out Hand it over to me, the whole outfit, all of your desires, all of your wants and wishes and dreams. Turn them all over to me. Give me yourself to me, and I will make you a new self in my image. Give me yourself, and in exchange, I will give you myself. My will shall become your will. My heart shall become your heart. And I, I just love that image of, you know, when we when we lose our life, then we find it because when we give our life, then Christ gives us his life mm. and it can be Christ in us instead mm. of us. Yeah, absolutely. And talking on that point too, um, you know, both Sarah and Nate, you just mentioned this idea that you're getting this new life, this new call mm-hmm. um, to a, to a seemingly impossible bar, this holy living. And I want to spend a little time there cause you, you mentioned it on mm-hmm. Sunday, Nate. And I think it's, mm-hmm. I think there's sometimes misconception there. Sometimes there's uh if we're not careful, holy, you know, the idea of striving towards holy living can actually lead to self-righteousness. And so I want to spend a little time kind of dissecting that a bit because to be set apart for God, to live holy lives, that's, that's a pretty big call. Um, so let's get into the theology of that a little bit. What are, what are we talking about theologically when we talk about this, this holy life, uh, that we're called to live to or or live in, sorry. Well, that's the most holy one here. (laughs) (laughs) And humble. Right, holy right. and humble. Holy and humble. Go, Jake. <laughs> oh, no, you. you. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> Let the real holy one speak. <laughs> Nate, why don't you start us out, buddy? Sure. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we, we can we can take the that wording mm-hmm. of going, like, we can live in the kingdom. You know, it, it, it's, it's you know, pre- we can live in it now yeah. and go, like, well, therefore, there will be, it'll be, you know, everything will be perfect. Yeah. Right? And we'll see the whole world differently. And we'll, and, and to some extent, some of that is true. We will see things differently, but we'll still struggle. We're still here, this side of heaven. We're still in in the world, but not of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, you know, for for me, I, I, I always think of this beautiful picture of, you know, um, married couples, you know, getting together on their wedding night, you know, without having, you know, mm-hmm. other partners and without, in, 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 in trying to do everything the Christ-centered way. And the world would say <laughs> that that's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yet... Jesus says that that is the high and holy calling of a husband mm. and a wife to then join in 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 unity with one mm-hmm. another in Christ, one flesh. Mm-hmm. And I've always said, you know, because I think it's in Scripture that the high and holy calling is not actually something even Christians appreciate. <laughs> often, it's mm-hmm. it's something that we kind of go, oh well, is it actually? fun and good though you know like (laughs) is the jesus stuff good Mm -hmm. and um and so that's like deny yourself and you'll find life Mm -hmm. you know like what what are what are these words yeah but yet that's the the high and holy calling is to put christ first in our in our lives in our marriages and and then in so honoring him and in so you know uh working and operating out of the spirit that's where we actually can live into that calling Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but that marriage example is just one example of going like there's something beautiful out there, and I don't think we paint the beautiful picture yeah. uh, uh, enough, um, especially for our kids and our young people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. First uh, Peter two nine says, "You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, mm-hmm. God's special possessions, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light." And so, you know, this idea of holiness, of being chosen, of being set apart for God, I think has it 
sometimes we don't think of that piece. We think of holy as in like do the right thing and be perfect. Mm -hmm. And not that that's not part of what holiness is, but there's this other thing that's chosen that it's set apart for God. And I think that ties into the idea of giving your whole life, that your life is set apart for God, that Mm -hmm. your money is not your own. It's he gave it to you to manage for him. Your time is not your own. What you do with your time is not your decision. It's set apart for God. And so how are you going to, just like you budget your money, how are you going to budget all your time? How are you going to budget your emotional energy? What, how are you, where are you going to set that? Because it's your whole life, your whole self. Like you're not your own. You were bought at a price. Mm -hmm. Somebody paid for you and that Mm -hmm. was Jesus. So Mm -hmm. it's set apart for him. And that's part of what holiness means. Right. And so Mm -hmm. I think thinking through, uh, some of those decisions, and I think it's easier to do in some parts of our life like in one way it's not easy to make the right decisions but it's easy to think like i have to make decisions about how i'm going to spend my money Mm -hmm. i think it gets a little more ambiguous about i have to make decisions about how i'm going to spend my time and even more ambiguous about i have to make decisions about how i'm going to spend my emotional energy and, and so on and so on and so just thinking through some of those different aspects of our life of like how can each part of our life be set apart for god mm-hmm. absolutely yeah yeah for me uh it- I always go, you know, I, there's nothing I can do to be holy. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I yeah. sin daily and I'm, I'm an idiot. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, but That's not true. <laughs> thank well. you. Thank you. <laughs> We're all just idiots. Kidding. Let's just be real. Wow, wow, wow. You are getting less holy as we speak. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, the call outs. All right, go ahead. But, man. you know, what, what Jesus did for us by dying for our sin, that mm-hmm. made us holy. Yeah. Um, and, and every morning, well, not every morning, but a lot of times when I pray, I just go, God, you know, when, you, when I think about David and God said, this is a man after my own heart, yeah. I go, man, I want to be like David, but mm-hmm. a little bit better, you know? Like without the adultery. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And I'm like, avoid those. No, but I, I, and- <laughs> I look into that and I go, why was David? Yes. I mean, he did all this crazy right. stuff, but why was he a man yeah. after his God heart? And exactly. it's because he always came back and said, God, I'm sorry. Yeah. Please forgive exactly. me. And he had real yeah. remorse and he had repentance. Mm-hmm. Um, and repentance to me is just changing the way you think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a constant thing, you know. So for me, that's how I try to be holy, you know, to change yeah. the way you think and mm-hmm. to guard your own heart. You know, it's all, mm-hmm. it's a daily thing, you know, mm-hmm. just like you were saying, like, in a, being in a marriage, living your wife, it's a daily, it's yeah. a way you think. It's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I find it really interesting that, like, the holiness tradition and the, and yeah. the call to be holy, yeah. it has this, like, icky yeah. kind of totally. tinge to it. It's like, yeah. oh, like, oh, like, yeah. I don't, do we really want to do that? <laughs> yeah. Which is very funny because the one who is holy is God. Like, yeah. like mm. to be holy is to be like God, to be Christ-like. Mm. And is there any other being more beautiful, more good, more more joyful? Yeah. Mm. There's no other being other than God. And so to like be like, oh, I don't, I don't want to be like that. Like that just <laughs> sounds a bit ridiculous. I think mm. part of the other thing is sometimes we think being holy means like this, like out of the out of your skin, kind of super spiritual, Mm-mm. weird. Yeah. yeah, like just weird looking person. <laughs> yeah, 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 where where it's actually to holiness actually is to be human, yeah. Yeah. to be more human, yeah, to be, to be more fully, fully human. human. Yeah, like absolutely. our picture of holiness is Jesus, the Son of God, yeah. as a human being. That's right. We're not trying to be something other than human. Yeah. I hate when people say, "Oh, I'm just human." It's like as if that's like a <laughs> yeah. yeah. The know, word "just" there could like, not be whoa, more wrong. No, no, you are made in God's image, yeah, exactly. and that and human. You know, yeah. so uh, there's a there's a couple really good books about this about what it means to be spiritual, and, and the spirit is actually making you more human, not less. Yeah. And uh, I think we just need to renew our imaginations mm-hmm. about what holiness looks like yeah. and is, because yeah. it's not this dull, boring kind of snooty thing it's it's actually something marvelous and and, and beautiful i think the ickiness factor that you're talking about that yes i know exactly what you're saying i think that comes because we sometimes conflate hypocrisy and judgmentalism into that idea of holiness Mm. and so yeah like you said renewing our imaginations and imagining holiness without that and then maybe if we can't then maybe we have to look at like what we think holiness is and why would we think it would be judgmental or Mm. hypocritical because that's not what jesus was Mm -hmm. lindy actually remember when uh, we were in jay's life group and he said something i felt was good he's we talked about being holy just one time time. (laughs) the book peter and he said something about you know it's not always holiness what you what you do not do Mm -hmm. because i'm not doing this i'm not doing this i'm not doing this but it's what you 
doo-doo. Yeah. <laughs> that stuck with you. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. 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 I wonder why. <laughs> but, no, that was great. Yeah. Because sometimes we live our lives and we go, yeah. I'm holy because I don't do this, I don't do this, I don't yeah. do this. Yeah. Right. And instead That's it's right. about what are you doing with your life? Yeah. How are you living mm-hmm. out this That's holiness? Good. How are you yeah. being Christ to other people? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, well, Thanks, Jay, for saying it through Lindy. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, uh, we, we have a misconception that holy living is like constrict- constricting yeah. ourselves. Totally. And now we can't. And, you know, yeah, the, similar to what Lindy's saying, we can't do this and it restricts us. But, you know, this is, this is the what we have to, as Christians, wrap our head around is that we are at, created to live in that holy way, right. yeah. that is actually our natural way of yes. living. Yeah. And when yeah. we live into that natural way of living, we find freedom, we find yeah. life abundant, Absolutely. we find, you know, shalom. And we, we, we're we not sure we will. This is why it's like Costco. We're, we're still <laughs> sampling a little bit. <laughs> but mm-hmm. when we get rid of the nonsense, we actually can find life abundant. And that's when yeah. we speak about living in the living in it now mm-hmm. and how it's tangible yes. now it's you know dallas willard says like you were created to live in this natural way mm-hmm. and you oppose it at every turn mm-hmm. and yeah. then wonder why does it life suck so bad yeah. <laughs> and it's like yeah. you you live in the natural way that god's created you and even if the world thinks it's crazy that's as we've already quoted mm-hmm. we're supposed to be a weird phenomenon in yeah. the world yeah yeah and i just want to say something about the because there's often in these conversations of holy living you always have this kind of grace versus works right. kind of competition and yeah. battle and yeah. as if yeah. as if it, if if you're working hard at this then you're not you're not Doesn't walking yeah. in grace you know <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you know Nate mentioned Dallas Willard and one of the things Dallas Willard once said and it stuck with me for a long time is he said grace is not opposed to effort yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. opposed to earning yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's not opposed to effort it's opposed to earning like this takes effort yeah holy spirit inspired effort mm-hmm. but it's not you're not earning holiness you're not earning your way into heaven you're just working out your salvation in yes, fear and trembling yeah. Yeah, I love that. and you can't do that effort without the grace yeah the effort comes from the grace you received well i think that's one of the most important elements in this whole trying to navigate this holiness conversation is mm-hmm. understanding that everything is empowered by the grace that god's given us yeah like like you said going back to this whole earning thing you you can't earn holiness God's already given it to you, yeah. Right? right, and it's because of it, yeah. that grace that we have it, and I think that's a that's an important anchor point when we're li- even living out holy life, is to understand we get to live this out because we've been given grace, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and that I think that does a couple of things. One, it, it helps keep the right perspective on on the fact that we need to be humble in all of this, mm-hmm. but it also is this empowering thing of no, God's giving me the ability to do this because of the grace He's given me. Now I get to go live this out mm-hmm. and figure out what this looks like and and navigate all of that. And it's a it's a pretty incredible privilege, mm-hmm. um, I think. And uh, I guess the last question that I really want to get at uh, real quick is, you know, as as we strive to live out this holy life. How does that actually change the darkness around us? Like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, how does us living this life that God has asked us or called us to? How does that actually impact the world around us? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in a practical way. And maybe Nate, because you had mentioned this a little bit in your sermon, maybe start us out on that bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll pick just one quick one. I mm-hmm. think that you know when when we model something different to people around us, mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't take much for them to to notice i said like uh, you yeah, turn on a, a light in the room and it can illuminate the whole room and it doesn't yeah. have to be a bright really bright light but it can actually bring a lot of light mm-hmm. i think it doesn't take much for our friends to say like what'd you do on the weekend and you go like i went to church they go oh you go to church you go i love my church i love that we have amazing you know yeah. our preaching is way better than our worship but it's really good <laughs> <laughs> i love you toby uh, don't look at me like that I'm kidding. <laughs> but i think you know I, I think like you know it doesn't take much to mm-hmm. model that or simply like when friends have come over before to watch my relationship with my boys, I hope that encourages them. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, I hope they they go home and go like, shoot, yeah, I work a lot and I need to spend a bit more time with my kids because yeah. I want something. You know, and I and I don't do what I do so that people might. But mm-hmm. like, this is the call. This is what Scripture is saying: is that when you live a life sold out for Christ, it's easy for people to notice. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think I, th- I preached a whole sermon on it being attractive. Like yeah. People actually are attracted to it and go, ooh, yeah. there's something different. I want that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Absolutely. I really like in your sermon, too, how you mentioned about, like, we, we are, of course, we're a light to our fave five, but we're also a light to each other in the body. And some of those examples you gave, I think, are mm. really good of you actually, like, give and receive light to each other, mm-hmm. right? Because we, uh, 
you, you know, different people in our lives can model different ways that they reflect uh, the image of God, which is, I, I love that analogy of light and sort of goes with the optics thing of like, you know, to image God, how many people does it take to reflect the image of God? Well, it takes billions and billions of them. <laughs> and we can all reflect these different facets of who he is. And when we see that in each other, it's encouraging. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I just think the light image that Nate used was was perfect. Like when light hits the darkness, the darkness flees. Yeah. So if you got the light of Jesus operating in you through holiness, through the fruit of the spirit, mm-hmm. you know, when you're when when joy and peace and kindness and goodness and faithfulness are illuminating, darkness just can't stand. Yeah. It's just yeah. gone. And as Nate said wonderfully just there, it's attractive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People like things that are attractive. Yeah. And so we should. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's a yeah. No, absolutely. The last thing I just wanted to throw in there and our life group last there this Monday, we talked about this, the struggle of, or, or the wrestling with trying to, you know, reach the world around us, reach our neighbors, like our mm-hmm. next door neighbors. How do mm-hmm. we, you know, and honestly, li- like when it comes right down to it, it's not hard. You follow Jesus. And when you're, when you're actively engaged in following Jesus, your life is a testimony. Mm-hmm. The way you interact with your neighbors, the, the, you know, sharing your story Mm-hmm. is the gospel story it's yeah. the good news in you yeah. and and it's not it doesn't have to be complicated right yeah. you just live it out um mm-hmm. when you're living this holy life your your life becomes a witness to those around you mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty awesome so yeah mm-hmm. well guys thank you so much for joining me on this uh episode of the podcast um uh, it's always fun to have these conversations i love it it's one of my favorite parts of the week honestly um to our listeners thank you so much for tuning in and uh, we'd love to connect with you so jump on our website Jump on the app, fill out the connect card. We'll talk to you next time on Digging Deeper.